Hey what's up guys, it is Saikuru Sam here and welcome back to another episode of C-Sharp Tutorials in Unity. In this video we're going to be creating the Winston Shield ability from Overwatch in Unity by purely using C-Sharp. And this was actually suggested by somebody who watched the previous episode where we covered up Tracer's Blink ability, so thank you for your suggestion. And the main point about this shield is that it's going to block enemy movement and also enemy bullets passing through your shield, but it's not going to block your friendly movement or your own movement for that matter. So it's pretty much going to be open for allies but closed for enemies so guys if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below and also subscribe for more content like this and most importantly let us know in the comments if you want to see more of these tutorials where I cover up some c-sharp tutorials where we create abilities for famous characters and famous games and if you do you can also let me know what kind of character you would actually like me to cover up and I'll do it and now with that being said guys let's jump right into unity Alright guys, so now we're in Unity and as you can see I have a little shield in front of me and a scene that is actually pre-built. So I'm gonna go through the scene real quick with you guys. So as you can see we have an object called player which is just an FPS rigid body controller. And if you wanna add that to your scene you can simply right click in your project tab, go to import package and then pick characters. And then you're gonna have a FPS controller right in front of you. And then we have a shield, which is a custom shader inside of it, or on it, actually. Um, it's an asset that I'm going to link in the description down below. It's in no way a sponsorship or anything like that. It's a free asset that I found off the asset store, and I thought it looked cool. So it's making this little outlined effect with a shield, kind of like a transparent effect, I guess, uh, which looks pretty cool. I, I really like it, so I'm using it for this video too. And then we have a ground, which is just a plane, and um, and then we have a directional light, just as you get from your casual scene. So that's pretty much it. That's the build here. And then we have a Winston Shield map or a folder here, which I'm going to use to organize my files a little bit. If you don't want to use that kind of folder, you don't really have to. It's not a necessity. And um, yeah, with that being said, let's get right into it. So. First and foremost, obviously, as this is a shield tutorial, we're gonna allow the player to actually spawn this shield and equip it. So, what we're gonna do here, we're actually going to make it a child of the player, first and foremost. And then next up, we are actually going to disable this from the beginning. And now, we're actually going to create a new script. I'm going to create it inside of our the folder that I talked about recently, because, once again, I just wanna organize the files. And then I'm gonna call this shield, I think. That's a pretty good name. And then I'm going to drag this uh, this new script onto my player, not the shield object though. Because when the shield is disabled, we still want to be able to access the script, which we're not going to be able to do if the shield game object is disabled and the script is on it. So now that we're in the script, we're just going to remove these two lines like I always do, uh, per usual. It's just a routine for me now. And um, we can actually start off by creating a voice start just to get the simple things done. And then we can create a void update, which is literally the two methods that we just deleted. <laughs> I just like doing this, I don't know why. Don't ask me why. That's that's just a question there. It's just a rhetorical question. <laughs> um, now that we're done with this, we're actually going to let the player equip the shield or pretty much just enable it. And to do that, we first and foremost need a public game object, uh, which is going to be a variable here. And we can call this just shield. There we go. And inside of our void update, we're gonna read or listen for player input. So we're gonna say if input.get key down key code dot let's say I don't know what key should we have for shield. Let's say F. That's a pretty easy key to reach. There we go. And then we're gonna say shield. Hmm, we can actually do like this: remove this line and then go to the variable section again. And we're gonna say bool shield enabled. And maybe we can make it even a private bool. There we go. And then in here now, we're gonna say shield enabled equal to exclamation mark shield enabled. What this is going to do is basically we're gonna read or listen for input from the player, which is going to be if he presses the F key, then we're going to enable and disable shield enabled, which means we're pretty much just going to um, switch it between enabled and disabled. So, and now on top of that, when we actually have it enabled, so if shield enabled, 
then we're going to do something here which is going to be shield.setActive true which is going to enable the game object and then else so if this is not true if we don't have the shield enabled then we're pretty much going to make sure that the shield uh, is actually disabled which we're going to do by shield.setActive false so very easy so far. Uh, we're going to get a little into a little bit more complex parts now, but I'm going to explain everything to you guys. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. We always help out. And I'm going to add a comment here, a little comment, just to make sure that I, um, you know, like a checkpoint, I guess, so that I remember what I was doing here. So here we can write shield, enabling, and disabling. All right. And then we're going to move a couple of lines down below. There we go. And now we're going to create a little shooting script for our player, which is going to be very easy. And it's actually going to, I think I can include it inside of the script to make it easier. So what we're going to start off by doing is simply go back to Unity. And let's see here, we can create a cube. There we go. We can move it forward a little bit to make sure that the player sees. There we go. Um, all right, and then I can actually make this the child of uh, of our player so that we can um, do this. <laughs> pretty much just set the position to zero in every axis, uh, which is going to place it pretty much on the player's position. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remove mesh render from this, and we're also going to remove box collider. And we can actually call this bullet spawn point, which is pretty much the point where our bullets are going to be spawned from. And let's see, we can also create a bullet, which is going to be a sphere. I know, very, very um, interactive and an amazing game. Very professional right now. Hmm, could actually just do like this. We're going to have this as a prefab, so I don't really want to play around with it too much. Um, perhaps we could add a, like, create a new, you know, just a material. Uh, there we go. Call it bullet. Have a color of red. I don't know, make it a little bit more intuitive, you know? There we go. Looks better at least. And maybe reflective. All right. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, now we're going to name this to bullet. And we're going to simply drag it inside of our project tab to make sure that it becomes a, a prefab. And we're going to remove the bullet from our hierarchy to make sure that it's not visible in the scene because we don't really need it. Um, actually, we could also do like this. We could add to the um, to the prefab itself. We can add a rigid body. Mm, there we go. And then we can actually disable gravity on it to make sure that it doesn't fall down very drastically as soon as we fire it. And now we can go back to Unity, and we can say, mm -mm -mm. yeah, we can just say a new comment and then uh, just write the shooting. There we go. And then if input get mouse button down zero, so we get left mouse button clicked, then we're going to say, um, we can just say shoot and then create a function for this. There we go. And then we can say public void shoot. And I'm going to go through the code in just a bit, by the way. So don't worry about that. Uh, we can just say, hmm, let's say game object bullet spawned is equal to instantiate and mm -mm -mm, transform that position and then the position that is going to be spawned at, which is going to be the bullet spawn point. So we have to go back to the variable section and just say public game object bullet, oh wait, bullet spawn point. There we go. And then we can say bullet spawn point dot transform that position. And then quaternion dot identity. There we go. All right, uh, let's see here. Oh, hold on, I know what we're doing wrong. Um, I set this to transform that position, which I honestly don't know why. That was kind of weird of me. <laughs> but we aren't trying to spawn this object right now. We are trying to spawn bullet transform and we're gonna have to create a variable for this so we just go here public game object bullet there we go and now we can also set bullet spawn uh, dot transform dot rotation equal to bullet spawn point dot transform dot rotation so what we're doing here is basically we're spawning a 
a bullet, which is going to be the prefab we're gonna set in just a bit. And we're setting it to become a new variable, which is going to be called bullet spawned. And then we're simply saying bullet spawn transform rotation is going to be the equal to this the rotation the rotation of the bullet spawn point so that we make sure that it's not going to like move backwards on top of that speaking of which uh we're going to make the bullet move so we're going to create a very very simple little script here uh called bullet and we're going to attach it to our bullet prefab here uh let's see oh yeah you have to have a game object like this and then you have to attach the script onto it then you can replace the bullet prefab so that you have the script here and inside of that script, we're going to open it up and um, inside of this script here, it's very, very simple what we're going to do here. So we're just going to say instead of a void update, we're going to say transform dot translate vector three dot forward times five F times time dot delta time. There we go. This is going to make the bullet move forward all the time. And now we can go back to unity, select the player uh into oh yeah i already said it but you basically have to set the bullet uh variable to the bullet prefab inside of here and now we can try playing this and see how it works oh it's actually moving backwards let's see if the cube or the bullet spawn point is rotated wrong there we go we can like move it a little bit and let's see if this changes it up yep it does all right cool so it's slightly slightly to the left so we can just move it a little bit there we go <laughs> That should be better. And we can remove the bullet from our uh, from our hierarchy once again to make sure that it's not in our scene. So now we can actually shoot. And what we're gonna do next is, let's see here, we could actually go ahead and do like this. We could, inside of our bullet script, we're now going to make sure that the bullet is ignored by the collision. So we are going to say void start. And inside of here, we're actually just going to say physics dot ignore collision. Uh, let's see, there we go. And then get component collider. Mm, then we can also say shield dot get component. I think we're going to do this. I said that I would do this in the other script, in the shield script, but I think it's going to be easier to make like do it from here. And then we're gonna create a variable called shield, uh, which we can just public game object shield. Oh wait, there we go. Um, let's see here. We're gonna have to set the shield to something. I don't know. We can try setting it from the prefab. It do if it doesn't work from here, we can just, yeah, it's not gonna work from here. Then we can just simply say, instead of our void start, we can say before physics ignore collision statement, we can say uh, shield, is equal to game object dot find um, maybe find with tag or find yeah tag there we go then we can say shield that's easier and the only modification modification we're gonna have to do now is go back to unity um, pick our shield and browse up click on tag add tag and add one that is called shield save and go back to shield and set it set the tag as shield and now it should be working so let's see here shield component all right and like i said just make sure shield game object find with tag shield is before physics ignore collision uh to make sure that the shield object is found or else it's not going to be found so it's going to ignore this line completely or else you're going to get an error one of the two so let's see here we are enabling disabling all right cool we can actually go to unity and test this out now uh to see how it works so let's see we press the f key shield is enabled and boom all right so bullets are moving through right and now as you can see or i could actually do like this so if you fire one bullet and it obviously passes through the shield oh there is a shield <laughs> so it passes through the shield and if we go to the bullet, you can still see that we have a sphere collider and it's not, you know, checked with its trigger. And this is where the magic happens. It's on this little line that we added here. So we are telling the physics of our game to ignore collision between this game object's collider and the shield collider. And the shield object is obviously just a public game object variable that we created earlier in the same script. 
and we're just saying basically ignore these two game objects colliding with each other and that's fine and the magic is this is not going to be blocked through any other game object at all so every other game object the shield is colliding with is actually going to be blocked and we can actually demo like create a demo of that i guess we could just create a sphere uh, move it down a little bit let's see just make sure that the player can see this <laughs> sphere uh this is a little bit difficult there we go and we can move it like a little bit forward to make sure that it's not spawned in front of the shield there we go and we can make it a little bit larger there we go and once again just leave it be with the sphere collider so that it's actually supposed to block and now we can play the game we can enable the shield by pressing f and you can walk up to it oh actually hold on uh we're gonna have to move the player up a little bit because the collider of the shield is blocking it hmm this is gonna be interesting <laughs> so what we're gonna do we're gonna play with the shield a little bit we can make it fairly smaller there we go shouldn't be too bad now let's see how that goes there we go now we can move and you can see that when i try to move through that sphere with the shield itself like enabled it's obviously not leading me through because there is a collider on both of these objects but when i fire these spheres clearly go through the shield but they get tr they get collided uh, or they, you know, detect collision with the sphere that we just created. So every object other than the, like, every single bullet that we have now spawned in our scene is going to be, like, let pass through or created, we created an exception so that these bullets that we spawn in our scene are going to move through the shield. And the point here is that you can use this little me mechanism to, you know, create your online games and make sure that your friendly allies can shoot through your shield. If you're like, I don't know, creating a hero shooter like Overwatch, Winston, for example, and um, to make sure that it's blocking every kind of, you know, enemy AI and or enemy bullets, etc., and enemy movement, except for your allies. So that's very, very simple, and it's a good example of doing it. Um, then you can obviously play around with the shield, the design and all that, but uh, the, me the mechanism is obviously working perfectly fine here. And now with that being said guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of C Sharp Tutorial in Unity. I hope you guys enjoyed this little short tutorial video. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below. It really supports me a lot, shows that you guys are actually appreciating this type of content. And also leave a comment down below if you have any abilities you would like me to cover up or make a tutorial out of or maybe even another kind of mechanism so if you have anything at all let me know in the comments and also subscribe so you stay up to tune for new content and don't miss out when they are uploaded because you're gonna get notified then and um yeah with that being said once again thank you so much for watching i'll either catch you in the comments or in the discord server see you guys bye bye